Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a fast, easy, and affordable website, click the link in the description. So the more time I spend with keyboards, the bigger role switches play in the experience. Like anything else, the more different types you experience, the more you're able to appreciate the subtle differences. So HyperX is back with a new version of their Alloy Origins keyboard today, this time with their new Aqua switches. These are their take on a tactile switch, whereas the last red switch was their take on a linear switch. So we're gonna see how this new Aqua switch and this board overall stacks up in the current market. You ready? Let's go. Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad C Tech, and today we're checking out the new Alloy Origins keyboard with the Aqua Tactile Switches from HyperX. Retailing for $109.99 US, the Alloy Origins is a gaming keyboard first and foremost, but not like a bells and whistles, kitchen sink type keyboard. I don't want to call it stripped down, it's just simple in its execution and it's built very well. Feels solid. This is the first full-size keyboard I've had on my desk in a long time. It will be available in a 10 keyless or TKL size shortly. It's up for pre-order on Amazon right now and shockingly, it's one of the few TKL boards that comes in cheaper than its full-size counterpart, going for $89.99. Inside the box is pretty sparse, with just the keyboard, the manual, and a braided USB-C cable, that's it. First impressions of the board is that it has some decent weight to it, it feels very stout. That all comes down to the aircraft aluminum frame, it is a floating switch design, so the top of the frame doubles as the plate. If you're used to a gaming keyboard that feels rattly or plasticky, this is not that. The frame is gunmetal and minimal, which always scores big points with me, and the bezels are pretty thin, and they're like beveled, like rounded off top and bottom, so it keeps a more premium look than most aftermarket aluminum cases do. It will fingerprint but due to the finish it's not terribly obvious and it would have to be pretty intentional as the area around the arrow keys is really the only real estate where you would manage to leave any fingerprints indicator leds are behind this little gloss plastic strip here and you get some printed hyperx branding as well there in silver underneath you've got height adjustable feet and plastic for two additional angles over the primary position which does not lay 100 percent flat so it's like three seven and eleven degree angles you also have a detachable usb-c cable which i always like to see but I'm utterly baffled that the connection is on the right-hand side of the board. This is the first time I've run across this, and it's not the worst if you're running the stock cable, and it is wide enough to accept any custom cable I have here, but it's just an aesthetics nightmare if you run a coiled cable with an aviator because there's nowhere for it to go. It just sits piled up in front of the board. Super weird choice to me. The font here does have a more gamer look to it, like a blocky, text-stylized font. The legends are all really clear here because these are ABS keycaps. Decent thickness, but they do have some flex to them, and like most ABS keycaps, they are gonna show oil and fingerprints and everything else. Good news is that this is 100% standard layout in the event that you wanna replace these. They do have secondary legends really visible as well, which is good because key rebinding is supported, but only with their own Ingenuity software. It's a Microsoft Store app, and it literally has to be running the entire time for the system to recognize any rebinds, so no onboard storage or profiles or anything that would travel with the keyboard to a system that didn't also have the software. It's a shame too, because the key rebinding and the macro options are pretty robust. This is also where you'll control lighting modes, the stock wave and the per key looks really good. Outside of that, nothing too groundbreaking going on here. This is still in beta and clearly still needs some work. There's no way I could find to even minimize this to SysTray. You literally have to have this open and running minimized to the taskbar. Not crazy about this at all, and judging by the reviews, neither is anyone else. Gotta get in a quick word from today's sponsor and we'll be right back. I wanna take a second to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video and for continuing to support the channel. As you grow, scalability becomes a really big factor, and what might start out as a simple landing page or a blog may need to develop over time into something that supports every aspect of your brand. When it's time for merch or it's just time to distill some ideas down into a tangible product, they make it easy to integrate that right into your existing website without having to connect the dots with outside services. They also offer a lot of flexibility in terms of selling physical goods, electronic media like courses or tutorials, and even offer support for subscription services. They also offer a free trial without requiring a credit card up front. So when you're ready to take that first step, go to squarespace.com slash badseedtech to save 10% off your first purchase of a site or domain. The overall quality of the lighting itself does look really good here. It's pronounced on the cat face due to the use of these raised dip LEDs where they're literally sitting on top of the switch versus on the PCB. So the characters themselves 
look really strong. While the key bed lighting is a little more muted because it's reflecting off that gray aluminum versus a white or silver plate. The balance of the bright legends on the more subtle background is a really clean look. Stabilizers are nothing really impressive here. The shorter keys aren't as bad as some of the production boards I've heard, but you do get a lot of rattle on the spacebar. This is something they could correct pretty easy with a better factory lube. I say better because I honestly can't tell if there's no lube or a very small and inconsistent amount of very light lube. I really can't call it. More and more, the expectation for decent stabilizers grows on these production boards, and some of the bigger brands have been a little slow to uptick on this. So the switches are aqua tactile. These would be considered their take on like a Cherry MX Brown. The boards they had before featured the red linears, so these will have a little bump for confirmation of key press without being clicky like an MX Blue. So in comparison to the MX Brown, these do feel a little lighter to me. The tactility is a little less pronounced, like the bump feels a little softer. But overall, they do feel a lot smoother to me. I was pleasantly surprised by these, and this was going purely off feel. It doesn't hurt either that the lower housing on these things is also an aqua to match the stem, and they look great. On the spec sheet, they have an actuation point of 1.8 millimeters and a total travel of 3.8, or 0.2 millimeters shorter across the board than the MX Browns. So they're a little faster in game. A little. They're definitely not quieter. Definitely louder than the MX Brown. Versus Gap Browns, smoothness feels the same, but the bump itself feels a little smoother and more sustained. Stem wobble is less on the HyperX. Gap Browns also feel the lightest of the three for me, despite them all being ranked the same. In a blind test, for my preference, I'd probably pick these, as they feel the closest to a 67 gram Zelios to me. These are rated for 80 mil life as well. So at 109.99, there's a lot to like here and some stuff that I'd like to see them tighten up. You can't argue that the board isn't well built. It is, for sure. Mechanically, the only thing I'd be looking for here is some lube on the stabilizers, and the location of the cable port just puzzles me. The keycaps have a good look, but there's a strong case to replace these here. This may be done intentionally to keep costs down on the baseboard as it's become increasingly more common for people to want to customize and grab a different set. And it would be really nice if that software was up to the same level as the hardware we're seeing. Because the hardware, the case and the switches, very good. It feels like it's built pretty tough and it's got a great look to it. And these switches could have wound up being just another MX clone, but they actually feel really good. Thumbs up. On my personal wish list, I'd like to see the logo done in the stealth black like it is on the TKL and maybe at least one cool alternate set of WASD keys included. As always, links down in the description for everything we talked about today. Any questions, hit me in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up. Thank you.